Hey everyone, it's Lauren, also known as Stark and Strange here on YouTube and Instagram, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make some of my absolute favourite and most commonly used text effects. So first up we have the circular text rings effect. Okay, so I use this particular effect all the time. And as you can see from these examples, I always tend to use it in the backgrounds of my edits. And I think it just adds a nice touch to whatever else you have going on. It's simple and straightforward and it always looks pretty good. So for this effect, what you're gonna wanna do is head on over to the masking tool and go down to the eclipse tool. Make sure your text layer is selected and hold shift and draw from one corner to the other to make a perfect circle. Now select one of these little squares, double click, and move your text to the middle. You can also go down to this little option here and choose the proportional grid and you can see exactly where the center is. So I seem to have put mine surprisingly quite close to the middle so I will leave mine as it is but if you need to fix yours up you can just align this middle point of the circle to the middle point in the grid. If you need to make any adjustments to the circle do so as needed. I might make mine slightly larger like so, making sure the point in the middle is connected to the middle of the grid. And once you're happy, just go back down to this little menu and deselect the proportional grid. Now you want to select your text, go down to text, path options, path, and select mask one. So now your text should move along to the mask like this. We are going to also go to the character options and we are going to fix this text up a bit by decreasing the text size. And I'll go to this like VA text tracking option and holding shift, I can space them out a bit if I like. And I will also select all of them by double clicking, command C, do a space, and command V a couple times. So they are overlapping here, so the way that I can change that is simply by decreasing the text size. And I wanna try and make sure there's a space here that is sort of similar to the spaces in my text. So once I'm done with that, I just simply deselect and you have a text ring. In the path options, we can select reverse path to make the text like a bit more readable by basically inverting it on the side of the circle shape that it's on. And we can change the margin of where the text is circling around. By keyframing this first margin, we can move the text around in a circle. So we're going to go to the beginning of our clip and we'll click the keyframe button on first margin, go to the end of our clip and move the first margin value forward however far we like. So I might just do 600. I'll drag it towards the end of my clip, select both of them, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and we might graph this one quickly. So we need to make sure we turn on motion blur. So select the motion blur setting here and here, and then go into your graph editor. Okay, so if you don't have the value graph, simply go to this icon and go from speed to value. And now we will make our graph look something like this. So now your text should appear like this which is great. And now I'm gonna duplicate this two more times, one, two, and I will scale up these different layers. So I might scale down the top one and then I will scale down the bottom layer so that they appear like this. At the moment, all of these texts are moving the same way, which you can either have if you like them going that way, but I might change the middle layer. So go press U and we will move this first margin forwards a bit. And then we'll move the second keyframe backwards, holding shift to move through the values faster. And we'll go into the negatives around, let's just say 470. And we can go into the graph editor to make sure we need to see if we need to fix anything, which we do. So I'll just move this down a tad bit. And we'll go back to the main timeline and press play. And yeah, you now have circular text rings. Next up, we have this really cool melting text effect. This particular effect I've only used a couple times, but I do really love how it looks and I think it's a pretty interesting aspect to add to your clips. All right, so on your text layer, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do once you're happy with how your text looks is pre-compose your clip. The reason we're doing this is because the effects that I'm going to use won't actually work unless the clip is pre-composed. So right click, go to pre-compose, make sure this is selected and this box is checked and press okay. Now go to your effects and presets and search up scale wipe and drag it onto your clip. Now you should see this effect here and you can see if we move this stretch value, the text will move like this. So we'll just keep that at zero for the moment and we will change the direction to 180. Now you see if we do the stretch, it'll go downwards like this, but I might just quickly move the center, which should be this little circle that you'll find in the middle if you have CC scale wipe selected. And if you sort of drag it somewhere down and you then move the stretch, it'll look like this. 
so that you can still read the text and not all of it is disappearing at once. And it kind of looks a bit like a barcode <laughs> at the moment. If you want to change the position of your text, because I think my text might be a bit too low at the moment, just double click on your pre-composition and then move this upwards by holding shift to keep it in the center. And then we can go back to our melting text composition. And if we move the center back up to the middle, well, around where the text is, you can see where it's being stretched. All right, so now your text should look something like this. If you change this, we're actually gonna keyframe it now. So we'll keep it at zero and then we'll keyframe the stretch and press U to see our first keyframe. And then we'll go all the way to the end of our clip and we'll drag this downwards to wherever you are happy with. So I'll have mine at around 61. Now you can select both of your keyframes, keyframe assistant and easy ease. Go to your graph editor and you can keyframe them like so. Also make sure you have motion tile selected and again, selected on your actual clip. So we'll just test this out. Okay, so once you're happy with how your fast your keyframes are going, simply go back to your main timeline. And now we will need to make another pre-composition of this clip. So make sure you're happy with everything you have here because once you pre-compose, you won't be able to adjust this. Well, I mean, you can, but we're not going to. So <laughs> make sure you're happy before you do this. So press right click, pre-compose, make sure this is selected and this box is checked. Now we're gonna head over to effects and presets again, and we are going to search up the and we're going to search up the liquify effect. So drag that onto your clip. Now you should see this bit of the circle and all of these different options. We are only gonna be using this first sort of nudge option. So make sure you have this one selected, go down to your warp tool options and you can change the brush size to however you want and the brush pressure, which is basically gonna change how much the tech, like how much this clip moves to your brush movements. Um, so I might raise the brush size a bit and I'll bring out the brush pressure. And now you can basically just do whatever you want with this text and sort of just drag it around and distort it however you like. It's quite fun to do. <laughs> um, so you can just make all of these sorts of wiggly effects and you can keep on changing your brush size to sort of move things together or in smaller sections. I'm gonna try to have mine sort of decrease to a point sort of down here like this. Be aware that this might take a bit of time to render because this is a warping effect and warps are a bit more demanding of After Effects so just let it take its time to do its thing. So once you're done and you want to select out of this tool just press V on your keyboard and you should go back to the main selection tool and then simply press spacebar and you can see it will render all of that. All right, so once you're happy with how this looks, to make this look a bit more, I mean, it probably looks better in an actual edit than it does on a black screen, but we can also add the turbulent displace effect onto this clip. And we can bring down the amount and I'll change the, bring up the size a bit, I think. And we can keyframe the evolution to try and make this look like it flows a bit better. So go to the beginning of your clip, keyframe evolution, go to the end of your clip and move this um, degree value down to however far you want. I'll do mine around here and I'll just see how it looks for the moment. And we'll just select them and easy ease. And let's see. So yeah, now your text should look something like this. You can also add other fun things to this. Um, so I might just pre-compose and see if I can decorate it a bit to see how it looks. So I'll be right back after I add some things to this text to make it look a bit more interesting. So yeah, I think I'm done with this at the moment. So basically all I added was add the Sapphire Warp Chroma effect. And I also entered the pre-composition before this one by double clicking and I added in a gradient overlay. So yeah, that's this one all done. Next, we're gonna do an expression text effect. This is quite a popular text animation and I have used it a fair lot in the past when making my edits, as you can see from these examples. So for this effect, you're gonna to wanna to have your text all set up as usual. 
and you are going to go down on this arrow to text and you'll see this little animate button on the side so click this little arrow and choose any one of these options uh, firstly we are going to choose rotation and we can change this value to 90 and then go over to add property and we will add a position and I will drag this down to something like this go again to add property and this time add a scale and we can make the scale zero all right so now you shouldn't see anything here but not to worry once again go to add and then this time go to selector and choose expression now you should have what looks like a frozen animation it won't move at all because we haven't added the actual expression code in yet so to do that we will go down to expression selector um, the amount and you'll see this little text down here so you just want to click it and in the description I have put down the expression that you will need to copy and paste into this area so just do that and it should now look something like this I also make sure you have motion blur turned on if you don't already so make sure it's selected here and select here for your clip at the moment it should look like this and we can go in and click this little text and we can change the settings so I might change the frequency to 1 the decay to 6 and the duration to 0 0.1 you can mess around with these settings to find something that you like but expressions are really good for making this like bouncy sort of text effect or it can do a bunch of other things depending on which um, properties you decide to add here you can add all sorts of things and I suggest you play around with them to see what you like and what you don't but yeah as long as you have the expression you can make a whole bunch of things but that's pretty much it for the expression text and lastly we're gonna do this ghost text effect even though this effect is essentially quite simple, I think it's nice to use when you already have some sort of text animation going on and this effect is great for just adding something a little bit extra to the whole thing. So for this effect, I have just copied and pasted the expression text that I used before and written something new because for this effect, it's easier if you already have some sort of animation going for your text, which I think will just make it look a bit more interesting. So once you have your text all done and ready to go, you want to pre-compose it. So go to pre-compose, make sure these two are selected and press OK. You Want to duplicate it by doing command d and on the bottom layer you want to scale it up so press s on your keyboard and increase the scale to whatever you like i might do something like around 180 and we are going to decrease the opacity so press t on your keyboard and decrease the opacity to around 25. now you should get something like this we can right click and go to layer styles and drop shadow on the top layer and we can decrease the opacity to 50 and the size to something like 40 and that should help separate the first text from the behind one a bit. Now you can also add some more movement to this effect by pre-comping your layers together like so. Again selecting the circle and the square and then you can go up to effects and presets and search up turbulent displace and we will again keyframe the evolution. So we can change the amount to something around 18 and the size to 250 maybe. So we can go to the beginning of our clip, select the keyframe on evolution and then go to the end of our clip and move this evolution direction to however far you'd like. I might do just around 180, should be fine. Press U to see your keyframes, drag it towards the end of your clip, not just the frame before, and then select both of your keyframes, right click and easy ease. Now if we play it back, it should look like this. You could also add some glow effects. Um, I'll just use the standard glow this time, but it can also add to the effect a little, like so. Now because this is on a black background, this doesn't look amazing, but I will get a background quickly. So I've just added in the cover of one of my recent edits. So if we had a text behind, it would also look fine just like this. It would probably look better if the text was colored as well, I think. But you can also change the mode from normal to overlay. And it also gives it this kind of cool look, which might be interesting to play around with. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this effect. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Remember to leave some suggestions in the comments for future tutorials you'd like me to do. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.